CompTIA A+, Core 2, Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 2.1, Summarize Various Security Measures and Their Purposes. Logical Security While physical security protects the tangible aspects of an IT environment, logical security safeguards the intangibles. In other words, logical security is the protection of an organization's data and systems through software-based measures, ensuring that only authorized users can access digital resources. Logical security controls include everything from passwords and authentication methods to access rights and permissions. Now before I get too carried away with logical security, I want to teach you about least privilege. The principle of least privilege is a foundational concept in logical security that involves giving users or systems only the permissions they need to perform a task or job function and nothing more. For example, if an employee needs to read but not edit certain files, they would only be granted read permissions. This principle is vital because it reduces the overall security risk within an organization, limiting the potential damage that can be caused by both accidental errors and malicious actions. Building upon least privilege, we have access control lists, or ACLs for short. An ACL is a critical tool used for enforcing security policies within an organization. An ACL is essentially a set of rules that specify the rights or privileges granted to users or systems. This includes an access list to objects, such as files, directories, or network resources, along with details as to what operations can be performed on those objects. For instance, an ACL for an NTFS file system might allow a user to read a document but not modify or delete it. ACLs are highly customizable, allowing administrators to specify permissions at a granular level, ensuring that only authorized users can access sensitive data. When accessing digital systems, we often encounter prompts asking for credentials. Using just one authentication factor, like a password, to verify your identity is known as single-factor authentication. This straightforward process, often abbreviated as SFA, verifies your identity using only one piece of evidence. However, as our security needs have evolved, so have our authentication methods. Enter multi-factor authentication, or MFA. This method requires two or more forms of authentication conforming to multiple authentication factors in order to verify your identity. MFA can involve a combination of elements, such as, something you know, like a password, something you have, such as a smart card or mobile device receiving a code, something you are, like a fingerprint or retina scan, and somewhere you are. This layered approach to authentication significantly enhances security by ensuring that even if one factor is compromised, there are additional barriers to unauthorized access. One such MFA method in use today involves email, or more specifically, email tokens. With this option, a code or link is sent to your email address as a second step in verifying your identity. After entering your password, you receive an email containing a unique, time-sensitive code or a link that you must use to complete the login process. This added layer of security is crucial because even if an attacker knows your password, they would also need access to your email account to gain entry making unauthorized access significantly more difficult. Next, there are hard tokens. A hard token is a physical device used as part of an MFA system to enhance security. It typically generates a unique, time-sensitive code that a user must enter in addition to their password when accessing a system. A soft token is a software-based version of a hard token that provides the same functionality but without the need for a physical device. Soft tokens are typically implemented as an authenticator application on a smartphone or other mobile device. These authenticator applications generate a time-sensitive code for MFA. Because they are software-based, soft tokens are convenient and inexpensive, allowing organizations to implement strong authentication measures with minimal cost. SMS tokens are another MFA method, where a one-time passcode is sent to a user's mobile phone via text message. The user must enter this code in addition to their password to gain access to a system. And for one more MFA method, we have voice call tokens. Voice call authentication operates similarly to SMS-based authentication, but instead delivers the one-time passcode through a phone call. The user answers the call, listens to the code, and then enters it into the system. 
While any of these MFA methods can enhance security, their individual implementations need to be carefully considered based on the specific needs and vulnerabilities of your organization. It's important to choose the method that provides the best balance between security and user convenience, ensuring that your defenses are both robust and practical for everyday use. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.